Shalom Israel. This is Preacher Cal. GMS Stop and Listen. First and foremost, we'll give our praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honor star elders slash apostles GMS who rule well. And Barak Atham and all you Akim. That's our third is pushing this truth. And it's sincerity and strength of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Um, this day's scripture, uh, I'm going to go into uh, Revelation 13 and 10. Because a lot of things that has went on in the past with our people by the hands of so-called white man Esau and the other nations, they will be getting paid back for that. You know, you will be getting paid back for that. There is recompense for all the evils that you've done. So we're going to get into the scripture. This is Revelations 13 and 10. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. I'm going to read that again. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now when you go into that scripture, when you go into that scripture, he that leadeth into captivity, when you look that word leadeth up, it comes from a, a Hebrew word, I mean, a Salaki Greek, because it's a Greek word. Uh, sunago, sunago, meaning to gather, to collect, of a net in which they are caught, to gather together by convoking, right? That word convoking, when you look that word up, that's to call and meeting together between people. Now, when you when you look at the reference of our people, who did that? Esau got together with the Hamites and the Arabs and they got together and formed the transatlantic slave trade and, and took our people into captivity. They gathered our people up from the west coast of Africa and other parts, mainly the west coast, and they sold us into slavery. That was the gather they gathered together amongst themselves to put the uh, nation of Israel into slavery, man. And it says he that leadeth, so if you if you collect people and gather them up, right, in a net to be caught, right, it says, he that leadeth into captivity, when you look that word captivity up, right, it's a, a Greek word, uh, halasis, halasis, right, to be taken, uh, a period of time when somebody is held prisoner. So when we was taken in the transatlantic slave trade, we were put, we were held against our will and put in prison. You, you were shackled. Anytime you shackle or you put somebody behind bars, you are in prison. And now that we are in America, you are still in prison. You are not free because when you came to America, they started giving you um, a certain period of time. You was in chains, but then when you came out. You had nothing. You couldn't even come back to where you came from because you had nothing. So then they start giving you social security cards, social security numbers. Just to leave America, to go outside of the borders of this city, you got to have what's called a passport. And then when you go to another country, you can't be there but a certain amount of days. Or you got to get what's called a work visa. So the system, this whole system is set up, you're still in slavery. Esau even got the animals in slavery. Go to your local zoo and go and see, them. Are, are not they in slavery? Aren't they being held prisoners? When they, the animals taken, ain't no lions in America. They come from the other side of the world. You know, you don't see no monkeys in, in America like that. They come from the other side of the world, giraffes and whatnot. All them animals in the zoo were taken from their homeland and brought here, and they're in cages. They're in prison also. 
And you think for one second them animals don't know they're being held captive? You know? It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Shall go, you will be led yourself. You will be brought into captivity. If you lead someone into captivity, then the recompense is that you go into captivity. That's righteous, man. You know? That's righteous. Let me get this Exodus 21. It's only righteous if it happens to you. 21 and 23. It says, and if any mischief follow, then shall thy then shall give life for life. Have not Esau and the other nations pushed uh, mischief and brought evil upon the nation of Israel? They've always went to war with Israel, man. So shouldn't it be a life for a life when you kill? When you kill, shouldn't a life be taken? And it says, eye for an eye, a two for a two, hand for a hand, and foot for a foot. So if you cut my foot off, I should be able to cut your foot off. Shit, when you go back and look at Roots when they cut off uh, Tobit's foot, he, he, he didn't get the recompense of cutting somebody else's foot off. You know? And it says, a burning for burning, a wound for a wound, a strike for a strike. So if you do something to me, it's only righteous if I do the same to you. So y'all have led our people into captivity. So you are going to go into captivity by the hands of Yahweh uh, Shem Yahweh Shem. I'm going to get this scripture here. This is the book of Matthews um, 7 and 2. It says, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure of ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. That's talking about to what standard, what standard, that word meet is a standard. So what standards and codes you judging us by, which Esau don't go by the Bible, this is the, the law, this is the statutes, and these are the commandments. He don't go by this law, he go by his own penal codes and statutes that he made up to suit himself and to keep you in slavery. He's judging you by his standard. So he's going to be judged by a standard. And his standard, the standard he's going to be judged by is way higher than the standard that he has going on. The standard he's going to be judged by is the Bible. And the Bible said that Esau, you're going to drink of your own, the drink of your own blood, man. It says you are going into captivity. Come. And it says, verse Revelation 13 and 10, it says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And when you look that word killeth up, it's a, a Greek word, it's a apaitai, a apaitano, a apaitano, a which means to kill anyway, to destroy, to abolish, to extinguish. To allow to perish, to inflict mortal death, to perceive, to deprive of spiritual life, and to procure eternal misery in hell. So it says, So did not have not you killed our people? Have not you inflicted mortal death on our people? You killed them on the other side, you threw them over the boat as they came on this side for shark bait. When we got over here, you hung us up, you shot us, shot us down, you pulled us apart with horses. And our, and our northern tribe brothers, you fed uh, babies to alligator for bait, it's alligator bait. You have you have inflicted mortal death on our people. You have you have created these viruses. You have destroyed the water, you have destroyed, you have destroyed the air, you destroyed the food.
This is inflicting mortal death upon our people, man. You deprived us of spirit, the spiritual life. You, you painted Caesar Bozier as being the Lord. You created, you created, you brought these so-called pastors in and bamboozled the people. Thinking Christianity, uh, your, your way is the truth. The truth has always been in the, in the Bible, man. The pride our people, you took away the heritage, man. And told them they was Africans. And not Israelites. And procured, uh, procured internal misery in hell. You the one that was put up to do that, man. You are that, that one that was made to be that oppressor. You was picked for that job. So you have to pay, man. There's no way around it. You know? And it says, he that killed with the sword, what's the sword? The sword is a, is a, is an instrument of death, man. A killing instrument, a thrusting instrument. That's what a sword is in a literal sense. The modern day sword are the guns. The modern day sword is these uh, uh, heart machines. That modern day um, gun, the sword is the nuclear missiles, man. That's the modern day sword, the nuclear missiles. ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missiles. These are the modern day swords, man. That you would take up arms and battle in the day of Hamagawa, when you when the Lord comes, you know. Even strife and contention is a sword, you know, because strife is being bitter. You've been in bitter conflict with the, with the Israelites since uh, Esau and Jacob. Since you didn't get the blessing, you've always had strife and contention, because your words were that you were gonna you were gonna kill your brother Jacob. And you've been doing that ever since. Strife and contention is a sword also, man. It says, He that he that leadeth into captivity must go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Like the scriptures say, man, eye for an eye, man. An eye for an eye. Two for a two, man. Burning for burning. So if you kill it with the sword, you must be killed with the sword. You know? This scripture right here. This is uh, Isaiah 26 and 21. It says, For behold, the Lord Yahweh cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall not cover, no more cover her slain. So the Lord is getting ready to pay you back, Esau, for all the blood you shed in the earth and our people you kill. The earth is not going to cover the slain no more, meaning you won't be killing us no more like that. Because when we inherit the kingdom of heaven, we're going to die being old people, man. We're going to live to a complete, to complete thousand years, man. And we'll just die naturally and then come back. The killing won't be at your hand. Our bodies won't be found in the bottom of lakes that you've thrown in there or hung in trees no more. Our bodies won't be found in the bellies of alligators no more. Or shallow graves by the pond. Our bodies won't be found burned by you no more. And it says, Revelation 13 and 10, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And I keep reiterating this scripture because this is a serious scripture, man. This is a cold scripture. This is one of the scriptures when Esau come up to your camp. When you read that, man, that this scripture right here gets deep into the soul of those wicked people, man. And they have to leave, man. A lot of times, man, you read a lot of... It's a lot of scriptures you read, they'll try to debate. But when you read Revelation 13 and 10, 
or you read Isaiah 14 and 21, they have to go. The Spirit has proven that many times. Go look at old videos the brothers have put up. When they read Revelation 13, 9, and 10, the wicked have to flee, man. This is a serious scripture, man. This Genesis 9 and 6. Genesis 9 and 6. It says, Matter of fact, I started five. It says, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of every man. And at and the hand of every man's brother will I require the, the life of a man. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of the Most High made he man. So if you shed our blood, if you killed our people, you're going to be killed by the same, you're going to be killed by the same, a man also. If you hung one of our brothers, when that time come, when you how about shimmy all the shot, put this race right at effect, it says, again, whosoever shed a man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. It said, by man shall his blood be shed so a man gonna kill you in that day you gonna get killed by a man in that day when the race ride start when all hell break loose in this society this city that great city that they call America which is getting ready to be destroyed by race riots, famine, martial law and thermonuclear destruction thus said the Lord Revelations 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. It say must be killed with the sword, meaning it is necessary, it is right and proper that this thing happen, that this prophecy gonna take. It's right, it's only right and proper. It's it's a it's a necessity, man. It's a need, man, you know. It's a necessity of the law and the covenant. The law and the covenant said it, so it's going to happen. There's no way around it. You know? So it's going to be the duty of certain men. It's going to be our duty to perform this, you know? It's going to be certain, certain men's duty is going to be to be martyrs, but a lot of men are going to get that chance to um, put their hands on Esau, man. The elect gonna get their chance. Also, some of the uh, just regular two thirds, y'all, they gonna get it in too, man. You know, they gonna get it in. It says, He that leadeth into captivity must go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. It says, Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The patience, that word patience is a Greek word, uh, hupomene, hupomene, right? Meaning being steadfast, waiting for it, enduring. That's the patience, man, to endure to the end. To stay earnest in this truth, stay steadfast for the elect. Make your calling and election sure, man, that you, that, that, that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall have mercy on you in that day. And with that, you get patience, man. Because you can't rush what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai's plan is. Will it be today that he's going to bring this destruction? Next year, five years, or ten years? It's all about you having faith and patience, man. That is going to happen. The scripture said, though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will not tarry. It's not going to tarry. It's going to come, man. It's going to come. So you just have to, you know. Pray for pray to y'all about Shem Yahweh Shah, man, that he endow on you the, the long suffering and patience and endurance, man. To endure it to the end, man. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. It says, Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That faith is having what? That conviction, that strong belief. 
that Yahweh Shah is coming for the, the, through, through him is going to be salvation. Through him, he's going to kill our enemies and set this kingdom up for us, man. The kingdom of heaven. The salvation and redemption is coming through him. That's our faith, man. You know? And it says, here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Who are the saints, man? They are the holy ones. The saints are the Israelites, man. Those are the saints, man. And in them, it's all about the elect, you know? So you got to have patience, man. That's the main thing, because this thing is happening. You know, it's happening. He's putting the spirit on Esau now. They're setting up, they're setting up for martial law right now, man. They're just setting up the bases, man. That whole little thing you just saw with Ferguson, that was the, um, that was just the, the, the like they always do the um, trial run, man. Then they do the AARs, the after action review, and figure out what can we do better and what can we, we implement that will make our our operation go smoother, man? To be in a, 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 a sustainment mode. Because trust me, when they standing out there, if they didn't have to be out there, if they could have robots standing out there, they could shoot you with guns on point blank. Some robots, like they'd be looking like on um, Hunter Games, those white, think those robots that was in them suits, if they can have a robot like that standing out there instead of them being out there, it, they would be out there. I mean, Esau had it set up like that. And believe me, they probably got them universal soldiers somewhere in the closet just waiting to stick the chip in there and come out and destroy you people, man. So Esau, man, is, is planning. He, he's he's doing his job what he's supposed to do. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, put that spirit on him. To be that that wicked and he's doing his job so you just have to have patience you know to the elect man because two-thirds they are they gonna be always impatient you gonna you know so this is one more scripture man and i'm gonna get out of here this is uh james five and eight be ye also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the lord draweth not so establish your hearts, man. Prepare, man. Be ready, you know. You know? But just be patient. The scripture says, be ye also patient, man. Establish your hearts, man. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh is soon to come. You know? Romans 13 and 11. Now salvation is nearer than when we first believed, man. So with that, man. Give all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our elders of GMS, slash apostle rule well. Barakatham now you Akim that's out there just pushing his truth and his sincerity and his strength of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Hey, this is GMS. Stop and listen. Appreciate Kyle, man. With that, man, Kwam Yasha Allah, Kwam Makar, Shalom.